Voters in the latest USA Today Suffolk poll are hoping Joe Biden picks a woman of color for the vice presidential slot. 72% said it was important, with Kamala Harris generating the most enthusiasm amongst those surveyed, mystifyingly. Joining us now with her perspective on the VP decision is former Ohio State Senator and Sanders campaign national co-chair Nina Turner. She's currently the host of Hello Somebody and a CNN contributor. That's right. Excellent podcast. Make sure everybody goes and subscribes to that. It's great to see you, Nina. One of the things I wanted to start off with you is I've been mystified at the lack of inclusion for Congresswoman Barbara Lee's name on Joe Biden's vice presidential list. She's a woman of color. She's somebody who supports, you know, radically changing um, our approach overseas. And I suspect that that is why <laughs> that she is not being included in many of these discussions. And I wanted to get your reaction to that. Well, you hit the nail on the head, so I got you. You know how to get you know how to get a sister stirred up. <laughs> if you are progressive, you need not apply. I mean, that's just the the bottom line here. And they're making it very clear. And no one should be surprised by this. I mean, certainly Vice President Joe Biden has a right to pick whomever he he decides to. However, there is a component within the mainstream Democratic Party that has a disdain for progressives. And so that is why the Congresswoman is not on that list, because she is she goes against their brain. She goes against their uh, vision for America and also for the world. And she has been steadfast, as you laid out, in her grievances against the military industrial complex has not flinched on that issue at all. Mm -hmm. what, what's your sense, Nina, of, of whether Karen Bass is uh, getting getting a serious look you know, She's not, not as progressive as somebody like Barbara Lee, but within, within the CBC, she's certainly considered you know, one, of the, one of the more uh, progressive voices. You don't see her uh, talked about much, though I have seen, I've, have seen her mentioned kind of in passing a, a few times lately. Because, Ryan, that's the key. You, you can mention black women in passing. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we, we just got to be real here. This, this hashtag wokeness, this woke crowd, it, this, this is just temporary. This is just an illusion. Black women should have been mentioned in the game for a very long time, not just in the, this moment is forcing any of the black women that you see even being mentioned as a serious in serious contention for the vice presidential slot. They are being mentioned because of the bubbling up of the grassroots, because of the Black Lives Matter movement, because of the progressive movement that is forcing the Democratic Party to take a real deep look at black women and other women of color. But for this moment, this, I assure you, would not be happening because as the primary has, has shown that the black community, the voters that vote the most within the black community have already determined that Vice President Joe Biden is their candidate. So once you already have that in place, you don't have to fight any harder to sustain it. Yeah, I mean, I, what's interesting, too, to me, Nina, is that they're co-opting kind of this movement and what the rising that you've seen. And then they're putting forward Senator Kamala Harris, who, I mean, I mean, you were quite critical of her throughout the campaign and, and many other people on the critic on the uh, progressive left as well. I mean, on a policy front, in order to in order to uh, put Kamala Harris on your ticket at a time like this almost seems you know mutually exclusive. And yet that seems to be the direction that they're going in. Because it's, it's superficial. And look, I critiqued a lot of folks on that stage because mm -hmm. my candidate was Senator Bernie Sanders. So I want to lay that out. It's not just it wasn't just Senator Harris. It was all the others who Absolutely. were running against uh, Sen who were running against Senator Sanders. This is has to be, as our dear friend Norman Solomon has put out there, about an affirmation of humanity. It cannot be about just checking off a box. But it is clear that the Democratic Party, that is what they are most concerned about. See, they're more concerned about optics than they are about the real deep-seated needs of not only the African-American community, but all poor folks, all working poor, all barely middle class folks. And that is what we are seeing here. If they were, in fact, serious, they would be looking at folks like Congresswoman Lee, Congresswoman Bass, people who are on affirmatively and for a very long time on the progressive side of the ledger. They would much rather have re Republicans for Biden than progressives for Biden. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. So uh, I wanted to ask you quickly about uh, Elizabeth Warren. You know, at the, at the end of the campaign, famously, Pete Buttigieg, Amy Klobuchar, even they brought Beto O'Rourke back out to you know, in, endorse Biden in that, in that famous 24-hour period. Elizabeth Warren didn't do the same. And I wonder if you think that that's impacting her, her VP chances one way or the other. If she had endorsed uh, Senator Sanders at that time, you'd kind of have the entire Sanders world pushing uh, the, the Biden campaign to get to take her uh, more seriously. He just raised an extraordinary amount of money, and I think that Warren probably had a significant amount uh, to do that. On the other hand, did she ingratiate herself by, by not doing that? What's your take just on a purely tactical level from her perspective in the Veep stakes there? Tactically, Ryan, you're right. I, I find I can't disagree with what you just laid out there. I will put a however to that. This moment has made it imperative for the Democratic Party to take a black woman mm -hmm. and other women of color seriously. But for this moment, regardless of what Senator Warren did or did not do on the progressive side, and yes, progressives are mad as hell, especially the Bernie Kratz, but that's a that's another interview. <laughs> even, but even, even with that being the case, this moment forces the Democrats to take a black woman Seriously. So I, I believe that regardless of that, even if we saw for what Senator Warren did not do for progressives when she had the chance in this fight for our lives, this moment makes it very clear that a black woman or another woman of color has to be elevated. In other words, no matter what, she would not be, she, she's not necessarily the one because Democrats have to take a look at in a serious look at a black woman or a woman of color. So this, the progressive, what she did or did not do for progressives does not have any bearing on her standing in this moment, in my opinion. So Nina, the last question I kind of have for you is just about when if Biden were to become president, and whoever he picks as vice president takes on equal and maybe even more import because that person is gonna be the leader of the party after he leaves office. Biden has already stated publicly, he wants to be the bridge of the party to people like Pete Buttigieg. How does your movement, progressive movement, the former Bernie and others, think about how to try to wield power in such an administration, which would obviously be hostile in many ways to many of the things that you believe? Yeah, Medicare for all, number one. I mean, I, I just don't even know how you can be a Democrat in this moment, seeing the suffering of people and not having an epiphany on Medicare for all. But I digress. The progressive movement has to take it to the streets, both figuratively and literally. Not giving a Vice President Biden, his administration, should he become president, any moment's rest to be out there, not to fall so in love with a candidate as we usually do, that we cannot critique that candidate and hold that candidate and their administration accountable. The progressive movement is going to have to form a pact, P-A-C-T, with each other and bring our strengths together. And on day one, I mean, the next day after the election, out there making it known what our demands are. And yes, I said the word demand deliberately. When he's inaugurated, the same thing, taking it to the streets, making our demands known and to advocate and agitate for those demands. Green New Deal, Medicare for all, legalizing marijuana every step of the way, every time they turn, running candidates to the left of incumbents. Hello, somebody. Oh, yeah, that's what progressives are going to do. That is what we are going to have to do to hold that administration accountable and to get the change that we want to see. Mm -hmm. So, Nina, whenever I'm engaging in conversations online about, you know, who, who Biden should pick for VP, uh, one name that I often hear put up is Nina Turner. They say, why, why isn't he, why don't <laughs> we, why are we hearing more about Nina Turner? And I always give an answer similar to what you said about Barbara Lee. I say, look, you don't, you don't really understand the system as it, as it is right now, if, if, if that's what you think is going on. I'm sure that you also get that question a lot from, from people. I'm, I'm curious how you, how you answer it. I do. I'm honored that the people believe in me in that way, but it, it's not going to happen. Just it, it's antithesis of what this man is running for, what he stands for. And, and it's a power play. So when, when you're talking about the levers of power, there is no way on God's green earth that someone like me or Congresswoman Barbara Lee or any other progressive of our elk would be chosen because that's not how he won the primary. That's just not it. And so progressives, I appreciate you, baby. I adore you. Yes, <laughs> 
one hell of a job. Make no mistake about it. But that's not going to happen this go round. But stay tuned. Other magical things may happen in the future. That's but right. Absolutely. Well, yeah, well, one of those magical things is your podcast. Hello, somebody. Everybody, please go subscribe to that right now. And rated five stars as a fellow podcaster. I don't know how important that is. Thank you so much for joining yeah. us, Nina. Really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Mm-hmm. Next on Rising, my conversation with Dr. Brett Weinstein about his idea to shake up the two-party system. More on the Dark Horse Duo plan. That's when Rising continues. <laughs>